Becoming increasingly sunny this afternoon in most places, although a few isolated showers are possible. A maximum temperature today of 19 degrees Celsius, that's 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Ben McGrail. BBC Somerset. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, Vernon and the breakfast team. It's five minutes past nine, and a very warm welcome to Monday's show. How are you today? Right then, now this is going to be quite a controversial little debate today, I think. Very simple question, only four words. Should we eat meat? Now, a simple question, but perhaps one of the most confusing, controversial subjects to do with food. Depending on who you listen to, meat is either a protein-rich, nutrient-packed necessity or it's a life-shortening food to be avoided. Which side of the fence do you sit on, then? 0845 303 1566. Give me a call. Are you a carnivore or a veggie? BBC Two on Horizon tonight. The presenter will go on a high meat diet to monitor the effects. Michael Mosley, he's going to be on the show in about 40 minutes' time, so he'll talk about how it went. But I want to hear from you if you love or if you loathe meat. Tell me what you think is best for you and why you've made the decisions that you have. Now, I will set my soul out today. I am a meat eater, but I'm not, not like a passionate meat eater. And I can, I can see a time where I don't eat any meat at all, but I know some people listening will be really passionate meat eaters maybe you work in the industry maybe you're in agriculture and you can talk up for that side of it but if you're a vegetarian for whatever reason i want to know why today call ben on 0845 303 1566 bbc somerset it's a very simple question but it is one of the most confusing subjects to do with food i think Let's have a chat to John Sune, who is from the group The Vegetarian Society. Hello, John. Good morning. Good morning, Ben. Needless to say, you sit on the vegetarian side of the the fence. But um, tell us why, then. Why why does the Vegetarian Society exist, first of all? Um, Well, the Vegetarian Society um, is a charity, um, and we exist to inspire and support people to be vegetarian, which is a lifestyle that's kinder to animals, people, and the environment. Why kinder to people? Um, because of uh, health reasons, uh, amongst other things, as this, uh, this programme may or may not, and I hope will, show uh, this evening. Well, go and expand on that, health reasons. OK, so um, there are a number of um, uh, health issues that can be attributed to meat, um, and you don't actually need meat to, um, to live a perfectly healthy uh, lifestyle. Um, all your nutritional me- needs can be met on a plant-based diet. And, um, I mean, there's, there are a number of myths about being vegetarian around not getting enough uh, protein or iron, for example. Um, but it's important to remember that eating meat isn't a license to not have to consider what you eat. We should all be considering a, a healthy, balanced diet. What do you think could happen, then, if, if you do eat too much meat? What is, the, what is the evidence? What evidence have you got to say that that isn't good for you? Well, I haven't seen the programme tonight, and I'm very interested uh, to see it. Um, But uh, high concentrations of particularly processed meats, um, such as bacon, um, can be linked to um, problems such as obesity. Mm, Um, They can be linked to um, increased chances of uh, type 2 diabetes. What about good quality meat, though, from the butcher, really good stuff? Well... What it what it will come down to is uh, it's a choice, you know. I mean, we can, you know, people. We would not tell people what they can and can't do, um, but people do have a choice, and they don't need to eat meat. Um, they can meet all their nutritional needs, like I say. Um, you know, only a small percentage of things like iron and protein actually come from uh, meat intake. Um, you know, three quarters of the foods that the average adult, uh, sorry, three quarters of the amount of iron that people take in. Um, only uh, comes from foods that vegetarians can eat as well. There is there is the argument though that too much meat is bad, but a, a little can be beneficial. So why block it out of your diet completely? Because there's always sort of moderation, isn't it? Everything in moderation, they say. Well, well, they do say that. They, um, <laughs> whoever they <laughs> whoever are. They are. Um, what I would say to that is uh, there are wider issues to consider as well. I mean, for myself, being a vegetarian is about an ethical issue. It's definitely kinder to animals to not kill them and eat them. Um, therefore, and, and there's also um, environmental issues as well because it takes a, a lot more of the world's resources to produce meat-based foods than plant-based foods. So for me, it's you know, if... if if we are in a position where we can make a choice, um, I 
personally and many people like me fall on the uh, decision not mm-hmm. to eat meat. Uh, John is with me. He's from the group The Vegetarian Society. John will stay with me. Let's just speak, though, first to Ruth Kimber, who's uh, from Kimber's Farm Shop, which is near Jelton Musgrove. Hello, Ruth. Good morning. Morning to you. Now, are you a meat eater, first of all? Yes, yes. OK, all right. So why why eat meat? Um, what is it about meat that you think is an important part of your diet? So would, you, would you ever consider being a vegetarian, actually, first no, of all? No, I, I, uh, I wouldn't consider being a vegetarian. Ruled out um, immediately. We need a balanced diet to keep ourselves healthy, um, certainly in children's development, both for their body, their organs, and definitely for their brain development we do need the protein that is only derived from meat um, there's been lots of studies to back that up um, I think you know we, we look at ourselves our teeth our molars you know this is um, a, a part of our body that is there to help us process meat and you know I think we're going against nature rather oh, okay well, that's a good so point to bring John back in against that. John Ruth saying there look at the way that humans are are created we're created to be carnivores um well i think that molars are designed to um to to chew plant foods as well um the i mean the thing is that if we are evolved um we now have evolved to the point where we've got these fabulously complex brains that can think up other ways of doing things um i suppose as a species we're now in a privileged position to be able to make a choice and eating meat simply isn't necessary for our survival anymore um, it's an interesting point that um, you make about, uh, or that Ruth makes about protein. Um, according to the latest figures from the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, the average adult um, consumes about one and a half times the government's recommended amount of protein every day. So, you know, in terms of the quantities of protein that you need, these are, you know, you can get these from things like eggs and beans on toast and lentils and seeds, cheese, milk, you know, there are plenty of sources of protein. Flour itself is 20% protein. I mean, when we're talking about a, when we talk about meat today, I think I want us to focus on eating meat in the right amount, in the right sort of quantity, because obviously anything eaten to an extreme is going to cause health problems and you know that's going to lead to obesity certainly when it comes to meat but if, if you're eating it you know sensibly is there not the argument that you know, Ruth makes there it's about a mixed diet that's got to be the healthiest diet isn't it with with having things in moderation but having lots of different variation of things no I don't I don't think it is a case I mean I totally agree that you do need a varied and balanced diet but I don't think meat is required in order to achieve that I mean only 38 percent of a the average adult's protein intake comes from meat, 21% of iron. Um, I mean, this is, these, are, these are small figures that are easily achievable through a vegetarian diet. So if the, if the argument is about um, achieving the right nutrition, um, there's no need to eat meat. What do you think, Ruth? Well, you know, obviously I, I disagree with that. I think that, you know, history proves that we do, we are developed through eating meat. This is why we raised up through the, the chain of the animal world. Um, it is why we've developed good brain power. And I would agree with him, that we, with John, that we certainly do need a balanced diet, but including our meat. And, you know, I think a lot of this has been brought about by people abusing their bodies by eating the wrong foods. And certainly we should be focusing really on getting people back to eating whole foods, not having the refined flours and sugars in their diets, not filling up on um, what I would consider as a a lesser um, meat product through fast food outlets. And I think that is is where the the biggest um, discussion should be focused. And if you look for your your meat, and you don't need to eat masses of it, but high quality, properly grown meat that comes from farm shops, butchers, if you aren't able to source it like that, then go to the supermarket, look for the red tractor, which does give you the security that animal welfare is high. And is it, what, it. what is it about, about that food then that makes it so high quality, as you say? You've branded it high quality. What, what, how, what does that mean? Well, I think it means it, it's cooking from scratch. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Thank you very much. So that you know what sort of ingredients you are eating. But what makes the meat high quality? The meat, I think, needs to be... um, You need to have a traceability in, in the production methods, in where your meat has come from, whether it is sourced in the UK, whether it's sourced outside. 
you certainly don't have so much um, control over imported foods. And when it's being put through fast uh, cutting plants, then its traceability is somewhat questionable. And is it, is it affordable, in the, Ruth? in the horse meat. Is it affordable? Business. Of course it's affordable. It's, it's, it's Really? All, yes, It's it not is. always cheap, though, is it? It's very affordable as far as your um, the ingredient cost of your meal. You don't have to dine on fillet steak every night. And you don't have to have, you know, pounds and pounds of it in your diet each week. But what you do need is that balance. And I certainly cook with lentils. I cook with beans. We have very little in the way of um, processed flours in our diet because I don't think they're very good for us. So I think, you know, we need to look at the whole picture, not just take out bits of it. Very interesting, both of you. Thank you very much. Today, we're asking, should we eat meat? Ethan says, we've got canines, Ben. I rest my case. And thank you to Dale as well, who says, seriously, Ben, I'm blaming you for my sudden early urge for something meaty like a greasy kebab. That's not entirely what we were going for this morning, and I don't, I don't think that's entirely high quality, according to Ruth. Should we eat meat? Original British drama on BBC One. Doctor? My face is fresh on. Why do I choose this face? Ben McGrail. BBC Somerset.